So today we're gonna to talk about, we've got three exercises we wanna show you that we believe target your upper pecs or at least place a lot of stress on them. I always thought upper pecs was like, man, that's how you really show thickness too, right? Right. When you see somebody with that shelf the up shelf. there, man, that's impressive. Okay guys, so we're gonna do we're three movements today that really hit the upper pec. And the one of the things we're gonna talk about, not too too sciencey, is about the way the actual fibers of the upper pec run. And that is important to know because if we wanna stress the fibers the most effectively, then we wanna make sure that our arm is moving in line with these way that these fibers run. So when you see a lot of guys doing incline press, you'll see them in this position. And yeah, you're still gonna stress the upper pecs, but there's a little bit better way, and that's what we wanna show is there's a little more optimal way to do this, and it's actually coming from this position where the arm is at about a 45 degree angle of the body, and then we bring it up and across the body just a little bit. And as you can see there, as I do that with John, we're really getting the upper pec to activate. So we wanna be down at this angle here, right in line with these fibers you see how that runs and then bring on across the body on this and that's how we're going to perform these incline dumbbell presses. <clears throat> you see how john's got that perfect 45 degree angle right there it's coming right up bringing the dumbbells in together you get a maximum contraction on that upper pack and that is how you want to bias that upper pectoral there you go, John. Also notice, he's not keeping his shoulders pinned back. He's allowing him to rotate forward. Fully shorten the pack to the top there. Uh, Come on, John. Uh, Two more. Uh, uh, woo. Nice, nice set. Woo. Yeah, you can almost feel the burn going like this. <laughs> and that, that's the other part right there. You'll see a lot of guys doing this is you talk about bringing the scapula back and holding it. But you actually see when John's pressing, John show that, you actually allow, you're actually gonna allow the shoulder to rotate around the rib cage here. So you don't wanna hold this shoulder back. John, show him what happens when you hold the shoulder back and you try to press, right? So now you can actually watch this. When he's in this position, this pec is still soft. Now John, let your shoulder rotate around and watch what happens. Go ahead, ah, now it's activated. So guys, when you're doing your pressing, if you're doing fly motions, you do not want to stay, keep that scapula, keep those shoulders pinned back. You want to allow it to rotate around to get that, those pecs maximally contracted. Ideally on these, what, what I like to do, Paul, is I like to work my way up. You know, see, I'm either going to be targeting somewhere probably between 6 and 12 reps. Yep. But uh, ideally what I like to do, Paul, is I like to work up to one set to failure. And my thought process is, I don't want to do a lot of reps on the way up and fatigue myself. Right. I want to be able to get uh, as much as I can for that top set. I know a lot of people probably tell you, oh, you should go to failure on every single set. You know, if we went to failure on every single set, I don't know that our top set would be very effective. What right. do you think? Well, generally, you know, it kind of plays into how, how we work the warm ups to end up um, creating a, a, a larger, better neural drive during the top set, right? So, you mean mind muscle connection? Absolutely, yeah. mind muscle connection. Uh, have you ever been in the middle, like when you're warming up and you're not feeling so great, but you kind of extend the warm ups out and all of a sudden something, the light just turns on and you're yeah. like, man, I'm ready to go? Yeah. So, that's all kind of a day to day feel thing, right? Yeah. So, generally, because people ask about warm ups a lot for whatever reason, what's the best way to warm up? Yeah. So, in your top set, maybe 12 reps for a pretty light weight just to get the blood in mm -hmm. there, feeling how the joints are feeling, add a little weight, do a set of 10, maybe 12. Add a little more weight, do a set of eight, maybe see how you're feeling, yeah. right? And kind of yeah. gauge where you're going to make where that you, jump to that last set. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's pretty much how I've been working warm ups um, pretty know, for 30 years or along the lines of that particular paradigm. Yeah. By the way, that one little set there I just did, it's still burning. Yeah. <laughs> it it's, feels great. And that's the thing is that if you put enough simulation into one set, two sets, yeah, what, what more can you, you get? A yeah. lot of, you get a lot of growth reps you out of it. You get a lot of growth. So, that is exercise number one. All right, for the second movement, we're gonna do an incline push-up, but we're inclining the feet. Um, and John's also, he's gonna lift his butt up in the air just a little bit, because again, what we want going on here is you want this angle, the arm moving at this angle here in order to hit that upper pec. So without this angle, we're not gonna bias upper pec, we're gonna bias the middle portion of the pec, and we don't want that. So we gotta be at this angle here, and that's why he's gonna lift his butt up. If you can find a bench or something that's high enough to get your feet, that'll work too. But either way, this will still suffice. Oh, my God. 
There's another benefit to this too. Talk about your serratus. Yeah, so <coughs> the serratus works in conjunction with the lower traps to help create good shoulder stability. Yep. And so you need a strong, if you have shoulder problems, a lot of times it can end up being either so that the interior serratus or the lower trap is a problem, but most people don't train their interior serratus at all. And these kind of movements right here really work the crap out of the interior serratus. So along with doing lower trap work, these do a great job of strengthening their, those, that those interior serratus. And we can immensely help any shoulder problems you have, but also help create strong shoulder stability. And that's why I was going up so high. That's why instead of cutting the rep short, I was going all the way up and actually going like this so I could get a little bit of straight too. So on this one, this is obviously not a dangerous exercise. So on something like this, Paul, I would typically go all out, crank as many as I can with. What do you think? Yeah, so this is one of those ones I like to often end with after I'm pretty fatigued yep. and even just body weight only for as many sets I get for one or two all out sets, just get that good pump going yeah. uh, and kind of leave the gym with a finisher. And that's where I, I like to place it in the syntax of the workout most often. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I'd probably put this third or fourth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna move over and we're gonna train the pecs in the lengthened position. That means that we're gonna emphasize more of a stretch here, okay? And I like these free motion machines to keep you and adjust these guys here and it's really important and critical that you get the line of resistance which in this case is going to be the, the cable itself and as john brings this this motion from here to here we talked about that 45 degree angle of the arm to the body you want to make sure that that cable is also lined up with his wrist and his elbow because a lot of times you'll see people that pull them here and then the cable is way down here you're going to end up hitting different parts of of the body, you can end up hitting, emphasizing more of the, the shoulder or the trap or even sometimes the lat, depending on how that cable is lined up. So we want to make sure when we're pulling here, that the cable is going to be lined up with the joints and with the muscle fibers appropriately. And there we go, that's perfect right there. Once again, you guys, you'll notice John does not pin his shoulders back. He allows his shoulders to rotate forward. So he doesn't go into protraction, but he allows his shoulders to rotate in order to, to really shorten and get a maximal contraction out of those upper pecs. There you go, John. Give me five more. One, two, three, two more. One, and two. Squeeze. Good. Oh, nice. Feeling that? Burning. Yeah. So you can see John's already got nice, nice upper pec pump going here. Three movements really smash uh, the upper pec, two of which are gonna work it, uh, train it in different lengths. We'll talk about the length and tension relationship a lot. In other words, we want to stress the muscle at different lengths to maximize different areas of the muscle, but also make sure we're training it at different peak torque curves and things like that. Again, I don't want to get you science deal on you guys. Just understand, we're trying to we're trying to really hit that upper pec, that degree of the arm to the body coming from here. That's what you got to be at. And remember, guys, don't hold those shoulders yeah, back. Don't, don't, don't hold like those shoulders back. That actually turns the pec off. So you guys, and I want to emphasize this a lot because a lot of people do this. But if John holds his shoulder back into retraction, his scapula into retraction, and he presses forward, look how soft his pec is. Now, John, let that shoulder roll forward naturally. You see what just happened right there? Okay, guys. That's how you got to press. That's how to give you your flies. You want to get maximum contraction out of your pectorals. And it doesn't mean to cave your chest in either. It's not for attraction. You know, we're not so trying to. Difference. We're not trying to tear up our AC joint. Yeah. So we're, we're just not sitting back. You know. But we're not going into protraction. Right. We're just allowing that shoulder to rotate. Basically, naturally. you're letting your body just work naturally. Just work naturally. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, John, you feel stimulated in the upper, whole upper chest? This, I think. <laughs> I think just one set of each of those will feel pretty, pretty awesome. 